Let's talk about and introduce the string class. You can see that I've listed a bunch of data types here, starting with byte and ending with boolean. Anyone that's in blue on the screen is called a primitive data type, and it is different from string. And we've been using strings like primitive data types because they assign like primitives. You can have something on the right side here and assign it into something on the left, but they are truly not primitives. One clue to this is the fact that string is capitalized, whereas all the other primitive data types are lowercase. A capital letter indicates that you're probably dealing with a class, and in this case you are. You're dealing with the string class. So it's important to note that a string is not a primitive. It is a class. Before I talk about, well, what does this mean and what can it do for me, let me just prove it to you that a string is not a primitive data type. In this program here, all I'm doing is printing out the word hello, and it would work just fine. But watch what would happen if I construct an object of the string class. String word2 equals new string hello. Do you think it'll work? Absolutely it'll work. And that is because string is a class. And you can construct objects of a class. You can't do that with primitives. So it follows the same format as the scanner class, or any object for that matter. You would say string word equals new string hello. You're going to have the name of the class, the name of the object, and the constructor, which is going to be the same name as the class. So that's why we say string again. And then you can see what's being passed to it is the word hello. And hello is going to be what's stored inside of the object that word is referencing. String is a very special class in that it doesn't have to have this new string part right there. You could just put the string right there so it looks a lot like a primitive. But it's still the name of the class. You're still dealing with an object. And there is no constructor. You're just assigning it. And the reason why this happens deals with the inability for strings to change once they're created. But that's not the point. The point is that I want you to realize that when you're dealing with strings, you're dealing with something special. And so let's see why a class would be special and what kinds of things you're going to be able to do with an object that you wouldn't be able to do with a primitive. And one of the biggest things that you can do is you can call methods. I can find out a character inside of it. So I can isolate the H or an L or an O inside of it. I can find part of the string. So if I wanted to take out the two L's or find where the two L's are, I could do that. I could find the length of the string. How many letters are inside the string word? I can also find where a letter is located inside the word. Where is the H located? Well, it's the first character inside of the word. So it's a good thing that a string is not a primitive data type because now we're going to be able to call a bunch of useful methods on the string word that we wouldn't be able to do if it was a primitive. So strings are not primitive data type, they're a class. They can be declared like an object. We don't do that often because it's easier to declare it like a primitive data type. Is it a primitive data type? No, but it assigns the same way. And then lastly, because it's a class, we can call methods on it. You can't do that with primitives. Primitives do not allow for methods to be called on them. Strings are so important to programming because they're everywhere. Anytime you send a text, deal with a Word document, deal with any kind of word editing software, you're dealing with strings and you're manipulating them. So understanding them and how the class works is going to be essential to good programming. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please do like and subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks for watching.